Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great, sitting outside with my little begonia bonsai here, getting ready to give it really a very large upgrade. Thought I'd turn the camera on, bring y'all along with me. I did this about a year ago in a video with this begonia in this awesome pot that you can't even see it. There's a really neat pot in there that this is planted inside of. It's been inside of a glass bell watered it maybe like four times if even it's been a very simple easy low maintenance just whatever you would call this bonsai terrarium perhaps since it was under glass i don't know as you can see that outgrew an eight inch glass bell <laughs> probably a, about a month or so ago moved it outside about a week or two ago just so it could get some airflow get used to having some movement around it because it's just been sitting in the house nothing going on for a long time and now what i want to do is bump it up into this much larger <laughs> again whatever we want to call this bonsai terrarium this is a 14 or 16 inch i left the tag on it and i left it dirty it's easier to see on camera this is a 16 by 14 inch glass bell yes is that right did i memorize that properly uh-huh yeah 14 inch round 16 inch from creative co-op hold on to this for a long time wanting to get this done. I had a few different ideas for what to do with this. I initially wanted to make a nice pile of some neat looking stones on the inside and then put this fun little pot up into the center so it looks like he's sitting on top of like a mountain. I've been sitting out here playing around with this for a while with my different rocks. Having a pretty good time actually. It's very relaxing just moving rocks around inside of a pot full of dirt. It's like a sandbox for gardeners. It's been fun. The problem with having the rocks piled up high if I do that, I don't even need to be talking about this just yet. I'm just jumping right in apparently without doing anything else. I don't think it's going to work with the glass bell. It's just, it'll end up looking kind of odd. I suppose before I start doing anything, I should probably go ahead and get this cleaned up, right? Because you can't even see what's going on in there. If you remember that video from a year ago and you needed an update, but here it is, that the begonia did very well. I think it's because of this arching habit that I'm seeing with the growth there. That's why I wanted this to be nestled up on top of some rocks so it could dangle. It, that doesn't really make any sense because as long as it's dangling, trailing the way it is, you can't even see this fun planter that's underneath there. This is going to be a pretty drastic cut and it's fine because this has been a very vigorous plant. I'm gonna go way out get most of that stuff off of there that's weighing it down. I know, it seems extreme. Unfortunately, there's not gonna be like a beautiful, fun looking plant <laughs> to work with during this because I've had to chop it up so much. After I've done this a few more times, I'll get some more sturdy, stiff growth down below and eventually I'll be able to have more growth up top and train into looking more like a tree, which is what it should have been doing in the first place, but it was just doing so well all on its own inside that glass jar that I was just leaving it be to do its thing. Yeah. That's much better. I know, it's not a beautiful plant anymore, but it will be. This will fill back out, and I'm going to keep it trained so that nothing grows below here. Chances are the next probably three or four times I get a few inches of growth to come up top, I'll cut that right around this level again just to get this to thicken out, and then things can take off and go nuts again up higher. It'll be more stable that way. I, I know I should cut this thing off up here, but it's, it looks kind of fun and derpy, and. I like it. I'll think about pulling that off towards the end. Yeah, I mean, when I see it in the larger container, it, that, that maybe I should cut it off. We'll see. What I'd like to do now is get to the fun part and start putting some various rocks in here. I need to pick out a gravel. I have, I think, two different options out here, so it should be fairly easy to decide. I have this, like, kind of natural looking pea gravel, and I have some larger, just lava rock. That's actually pretty nice. I think I might use that as larger pieces than I would normally want to use for bonsai, but this isn't, it's not really bonsai, what I'm doing over here. Oh, nice and dusty, perfect, that's great. Get that spread out, let's pour that dust out. It'll be getting a rinse so the dust isn't a big deal. That looks nice. Normally when I do the, any type of bonsai sort of planter, the lava <laughs> top dressing I use is a much smaller chip. Get that placed down in there. I debated taking the screening out of the bottom of this. See how it has that screen right there and just letting the roots grow through this down into whatever container I'm using, but I may want to change things up at some point, even put a different plant in there. That can just stay there like that. I have tons of these nice 
pieces of the Sayuri stone. Very nice natural looking stone with different colors in the veins. That's another reason I went with the dark lava stone too because I didn't think that that pea gravel would have looked all that nice with the Sayuri stone. There's too many different colors going on with it. My hope here, what I've wanted to do with this, I say have, I've been waiting to do this for, I don't know, four or five months and just hadn't gotten around to it yet. I like all the different stones because they add some natural elements and I want this to have the look as if, he, you know, he's just hanging out in nature. Well, there goes my perfect, beautiful lighting. Want to tell them what happened, Turbo? What did you do? What did you do? He's standing over here in this corner looking at the gingers and he got into uh, like an I'm gonna pounce position and then he did he pounced right in the middle of the gingers and a kitten came flying out and ran through there it's a kitten back here is anybody missing a kitten it, it might be yours she relieved about the kitten I'll talk more about that in the vlog over the weekend because there's a whole big story that I think goes behind that cat I'm keeping my eyes out for it so my overall objective here is that I wanted this to look like he's just hanging out in nature with this plant and some you know nice naturey things around the pot things that make it you know look like he's hanging out in nature so it was just some larger rocks I have to take into account that there's going to be a curve on the side of that glass dome so I don't know if that really works it sort of does having a nice piece directly behind him anchors it in place the stone is neat though because it has an overhang on it so i could actually maybe it's more like that we have this one with the holes in it that's kind of neat looking i think i like that one better but it's a different color from the rest so that's not going to work and with rocks sometimes it's easiest to just start setting them down seeing which sides you like the most the shapes and just let it happen not like that, that's not gonna work. Carve out a spot for these larger flat stones so that it looks more authentic and natural like they're supposed to be there, not just set right on top of everything. I figured I have enough of these flatter pieces that I'll be able to create that hanging out on top of a mountain sort of effect without needing to build a structure and then fill it with soil and put him up on top of it. I guess I could do that, but I don't know, I don't really want to. I tried to pick out some rocks that looked like they would fit together enough to make it look like they belong together, even if they don't. Some nice flat pieces. Yeah, yeah, what do we think? I, I don't know what we think. I like it. The rocks are fitting together nicely. This one's kind of random and out there, but I'm okay with it because it creates that sort of enclosed space that I wanted with this. There are a few other things I would like to do with this that I just, eh, I don't see myself doing. For one, I think a water feature would be pretty awesome. This is big enough to easily be able to put a basin down here and run a little tube that would come over and have a waterfall. That'd be great if I had thought about it before filming the video and gathered the supplies and not already done all this, but I didn't. So here we are. That's something to remember in the future. I'm sure, you know, give it another year and I'll be redoing this again. I have no doubt about that. This will keep growing. I want to add to it and take away. I want to add to it and take away. It does need some more plants though. And I have the perfect little companion plants right here. These are Syngoniums, super dwarf pixies. This is a terrarium I did, I don't know, a few years ago where I put just one little Syngonium on top of these. I don't know if you'll even really be able to see it. You can kind of see them in there. Some Cocodama, Cocodema, the moss balls. They've been growing very, very, very well in here. I haven't pulled these out at all. I really haven't touched these other than added some water into these containers since I put them together. But I would think I should be able to just like, can you just pluck, just like get one little division out of here or will I have to take the entire thing apart? I bet I can take a cutting from in there. I think there's a good bundle of them right here that I, I might actually be able to just pull those off. Can I? That would be ideal. The roots are pretty sturdy. Now I'm going to have to go in and make a cut at the bottom of those roots. It's all right. They're sturdy plants. Got a good amount of root on them. I don't think I needed this many, but that's all right. These are really nice syngoniums. These are full grown. They don't get any bigger than this. They get about four to five inches and that's it. Heart shaped leaves. Those will look nice tucked inside there. I'm not going to separate them all out because that seems unnecessary, but I can get like two or three clumps from these. And I'd say that would be good. A nice big one and then a medium sized clump and then a smaller one. Not a lot of roots on these. So I'm going to have to be really, really on top of making sure that this whole thing stays well hydrated. I have that glass bell that will be going on top of this. So I was thinking I would just leave this outside for a while. 
the background noise, Turbo has a toy. However, for the sake of the Syngoniums, I may need to go ahead and put that bell on top of this faster than I was thinking because I just don't know how they're going to adjust to just being pulled from a glass enclosure to being outside. Maybe I'll just have to take this directly in the house, which wasn't my plan, but that's all right. The reason I'm being extra cautious about the re hello camera. There we go. But when I'm going to be putting that dome on top of there is because you can see these roots are fairly woody. So a good chunk of these were the ones that weren't actually down inside the substrate in the moss ball. I don't want to just stick those down into the soil. So I'm getting the lower portion of the roots down to the soil and I'm piling the lava stone up which is just nice airy material around the upper parts that were exposed to the air. And then as long as things stay nice and moist in there, they should just root right down in there just fine. If not, it's not like I don't have more. <laughs> there are tons of them to keep trying this out with. With the bell on top, I would think that they should be okay. I mean, even outside, if I put this in a spot that doesn't get too much direct light, just a little bit of morning sun, and in direct line of my sprayers, my micro emitters that miss the area, then they should be good. They should take off. i go ahead and rinse that stone off, make sure there's a lot of moisture in here, get this watered in, and this is basically done. Oh, and I moved the syngonium that was right here over there. It was bugging me. I didn't think it made sense to have that right in front of our little guy because it's gonna grow up four or five inches tall. I think they look much better tucked away in the little nooks and crannies that gives it that more natural look. Does that look better now it's been rinsed off? You can see the veining and everything inside the stones. They're going to lighten up again, but the more this gets watered, the more that those will start to have their color start to come out because like, they're, they're dusty. Gave the big ones a light rinse before I did this, but not a very heavy one. I like the little puddle. See the puddle? See that right there? That's fun. Okay, but now the important part, need to check and make sure that the dome fits on top of here because that's the entire point of this, isn't it? Yep. There we go. Enough room on the outside so the rocks aren't pushing against the glass. I'm not going to keep this like this for now. It'll be out here for probably six weeks or so. Where it'll be getting hit by my misters multiple times a day. It'll get just very light morning sun, filtered light throughout the rest of the day. I think it, it will just establish more quickly that way. And in six to eight weeks, around whenever we start to have our first frost, I'll move this back into the house, put the dome on top of it, and it'll be kind of like a set it and forget it sort of situation until I decide to do something else with it. The dome's not a perfect fit. It, there's a gap on the outsides. This isn't airtight. There's a hole in the bottom that I could have plugged up. I didn't see a reason to. If I were to do the waterfall thing someday, then it'd be easy to fill in the hole. But for now, I think that this is, this is good. Just wanted to keep it simple. So now what do we think? Should I cut the thing off the top? Probably. It does look neat, but it's thrown the whole thing off. There we go. That's a nice piece. I could root that and use it for something else. I have more of these begonias, so I don't see myself doing that. That's better, much more tidy. I will be adding moss to this. I have some sheet moss out here, just the preserved kind, but it just, I don't know, I don't like it. Maybe if I were to tear it off in small enough pieces and tuck it into some of the crevices. It's okay, I don't hate it, but I would really prefer to use live moss in this. So for now, I'm just going to leave it be, let the stone do its thing and let the plants that are in there stand out. The moss can come later. And this lighting absolutely sucks. Finish this up in the morning, have a better look at what's actually in front of the camera. Oh, are you actually sleepy for a change, Turbs? Shouldn't say for a change, she's calmed down quite a bit. Next day, you probably already figured that out since that's how I ended things with the last clip. Did end up adding a few more plants in here. I was thinking about it, and since this is going to be underneath that glass dome, majority of the year I could add some really like high humidity loving plants into here and I had some tissue cultured aquatic plants that can be grown submerged or immersed they're tiny itty bitty little tissue cultured plants there's another one down here I mean just you're not gonna be able to see them those are Anubius Nana Petite Snow Whites they stay very tiny the foliage on them is mostly white. They have some green in there, which is good. That will help keep them alive. They're rhizomatic, so they will spread across the top of this lava stone that's in here. They should actually appreciate that as a substrate. It's nice and porous and airy. Lots of room for beneficial things to go on around the roots of those. I didn't want to put them directly onto the stone up here because I figured they would actually probably put those rhizomes out more efficiently onto the porous surface 
of the lava stones and I have just a little clipping from another Anubius plant. Again, very hard to see. There's an Anubius nano pinto, I believe, another variegated form. Another rhizomatic plant, so it's not buried. The rhizome's just sitting on top of the lava stone that should work its way up that crack and have little leaves that look like this. See the leaf, like that one? Very pretty, nice looking plant. And that's just a chunk of Alternanthea renekii that just, it's just sort of fell into the mix and I was like, it can stay there, we'll see what happens with it. And I just leave that there and just see what will happen with it. I want to say I'm done. Tonight I spent some time thinking about the waterfall. That went into my head, I was like, oh, I have to do it. But then I started thinking like, you know what? I don't, I don't want to have to have this near an outlet. So no. I did my best to get these rocks put together in a way where there's a flow and that flow to me is enough to create somewhat of that water vibe. During the winter time when there's less projects and I get bored, there's potential chance I might pull this apart and add a water feature to it. But for now, I think this is, this is pretty good. I like it. I can't 100% say I'm done with this because the more I look at it, the more I'm just thinking, ugh, it needs something else for height. I'm thinking maybe some palm trees. Probably not the best idea because they'll outgrow this, but these are power palm. The little roots on these, maybe, can we get zoomed in on them? Get a more solid shot of them. See that? Not a lot to it. I just pulled these right out from the base of my larger one, my much larger, much older one. They pluck right out. So when these get too big to be in here, I should be able to just pull them right out. But wouldn't that, let I me mean, look at that. That's just adorable. Am I doing too much? Maybe. Have a variety of sizes to pick from here. When they're not together, they don't look as impressive, do they? They just kind of look like sticks. They don't tend to hold many leaves until they become much larger and more mature, which is fine. I don't need them to hold them. I mean, come on. That's just stinking adorable. If the begonia weren't in this pot, man, how cool would that look? Just the one little palm tree? Actually, I think I like the begonia in that container better, but you get what I'm saying. I'm gonna play around with this some more and uh, see if I come up with something I like and hopefully the lighting will improve because it's just absolute garbage today. I really don't know why I'm even second guessing myself on this one. Adding palm trees, never the wrong way to go. This is gonna work out just fine. It's gonna be great. I wanted more height in here, so this will do it. If my goal here was to create this an image of our little mud man hanging out in a nice mountainside rainforest, something to that aesthetic, then having some more naturalized height isn't going to be a bad thing. Start with the larger one in the back. I wanted it so that this frond right here would be hanging this way, but I need to cut that brown stuff off and this one's about to open up. The trunk has a nice lean to it as it is, so I'm thinking I'm going to do it the other way around. Am I giving too much detail at this point? I wanted the larger one closest to the middle because that's going to be where it will have the most space to put on some height without pushing up against the sides of the dome when it's on here. All right, I think it's time to stop. If I keep going, it's gonna be too much. I have to remember that over time, everything that's in here is going to be growing, right? So need to leave room, need to save some space so things can spread out. It's perfect, this is exactly what I wanted. The only thing I would add to this that I don't have in here right now would be some moss, but I can add that in at another time. My yard is typically just full of moss November through like March when the grass is dying back and I just, I can't bring myself to buy it when I know I can just step outside in a few months and peel it up and patch it in. So like collecting the moss myself because it usually has lots of other things in it. Not always great things, but normally, you know, lots of little types of clover and other just random ferns and things will show up. It naturalizes nicely, but I do think some pops of green from having some moss put away in some of those corners would look neat for now. I'm liking this and I'm really looking forward to watching it grow. Considering I didn't have to go out and buy any plants, I just used what I had laying around. There's a good amount of diversity in here. The begonia in the back, I realized I didn't, I forgot to tell you what, what it is. And I can't remember, but hopefully I put it right here on the screen. It's that one. It's one that has a nice somewhat tree form to it. It's good for using in fairy gardens and little terrariums. This sort of a setup, it's a begonia that seems to be pretty good, whether it's grown in dry conditions or really humid. It stayed very humid inside the bell that I had it inside of for like, what, a year, just over a year. Never had any issues with it when it was really moist in there. And sometimes I'd forget and it would dry out for a pretty long time. 
it, it didn't seem to care. It didn't skip a beat. So I like that. It makes a nice versatile plant, which I very much appreciate. As I mentioned in the beginning, I will let this put on some more growth and probably cut it back just to stiffen up those stems and then let it put on a few more inches of height where it will drape somewhat and they get lots of teeny tiny little pinkish white flowers that grow in like the insides of the leaves. Looks really cool. It's a nice looking plant. The Syngonium Super Dwarf Pixies. Pretty sturdy. I would imagine they'll do just fine in here. They'll need some pruning. They'll take over if I don't stay on top of that. The clover that's in here, this little oxalis is what that is actually. I just pulled that up from the yard. I don't, I don't know what's gonna happen with it. It's just a nice dainty little plant, different leaf shape, nice texture. And then the two Anubias, they're the reason that this is going to have to stay covered and stay humid at all times or else those will likely die off. And the parlor palms. The parlor palms are the only things in here that will totally outgrow this, but I didn't set this up intending for it to be a permanent thing. You can make adjustments over time, can pull them out. And technically the parlor palms, you can do bonsai with them. It works best if you're working with a soilless mix restricted root space where there's a lot of oxygen around the roots, you can generally keep them into a nice shape, a nice smaller size. There's no restriction with the roots here. And I use a, basically an all-purpose potting mix. It has a lot of organic material in it, but it's not, it's not one that's going to be super high oxygen. It's not even close to being a soilless mix. So I'll just have to stay on top of that and can pull them right out. When they get too big, I am looking forward to getting some more fronds out of this one right here and that one over there because it'll have a much more Full look to it. Overall, in general, just as all of these grow, there's going to be a much nicer aesthetic. It'll look much more lush and inviting. It probably won't take that long for most of the plants in here to start taking off either. I did put a tiny amount of slow release underneath each one of the power palms. I added a little bit into the begonia just because it needed it and fertilized it in forever. And I've been bad about remembering to use the liquids when the plants that are in the house, I'm not as good about remembering. So just a little bit in there and that's it. That's everything. Lots of little plants, <laughs> lots of time making decisions, lots of chatter about it. Hope you enjoyed. I have something similar to this that I'll be doing and not too terribly long, hopefully with just palm trees and blue glass and maybe some resin projects where I want to create like a little island in the but I don't, I don't need to give it away. Get around to it, be able to see what's going on there. I love these rocks. All the different veins and colors, they really help naturalize things and just they set the whole thing up. I mean the nice larger hardscape, the pieces just happen to flow together nicely so they don't look like they're just a bunch of random rocks that have been set next to each other. They look very nice. Could have very easily done just the rocks in the middle with the little mud man with the begonia right there and I think that would have looked really neat as well. But I wanted something where there was a lot of detail where you could sit back and look at it and notice different things and see different things growing at different rates. I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. Comment down below, say hi, I love talking to everybody, some of your favorite little mini plants for terrariums, fairy gardens, those sorts of things. And of course, as always, and most importantly everybody, keep on growing. Bye bye.